Hey everyone, and welcome to Groove Builders, the show where we create together. I'm your host, Disorderly Cone, and in this episode, we're going to be starting a brand new series from Metal Earth. But before I tell you what series we're doing, I'm going to introduce you guys to a new member of our Groove Builders team. Her name is Laika, and she's a 13-week-old American Bulldog. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Now, she's named after a very famous dog that was the first one in outer space. Which is coincidental because our new series is all about space exploration. Our first model is going to be the Space Shuttle Enterprise. Groovers, let's get down to the workbench and take a look at the package. Oh, yes. All right, Groove Builders, welcome to the workbench. We have our Metal Earth Space Shuttle Enterprise in some classic Metal Earth packaging. Look at that. Really cool. Look how big that shuttle looks. Let's go ahead and take a look at the back. On the back, we have that classic Metal Earth logo followed by a nice depiction of our shuttle. On the right, we have some information on how to build our model. And in the middle here, we have some information on the history of the Space Shuttle Enterprise. Very cool. But we'll go into more detail about both these things during our build. At the bottom, we get a look at some other models in this collection. Quite a diverse group. And finally, on the right, we have a QR code that we can scan to get a 360 view of our model if we need it while we're building. This can come in handy when adding different parts of detail onto our ship. All right, Groovers, let's go ahead and open up our package. We have our instructions. And we have our metal. And it looks like just one sheet. All right, Groovers, let's get building. Groovers, as we cut out our first couple of pieces for our shuttle, the main body and the nose cone, we need to look at some of the instructions. Uh, R2, um, R2, yeah, you're gonna have to stop petting Laika there, buddy. I need your help with the instructions. Ah, there we go, thank you, R2. Groovers, if you're following along at home and you have a package similar to mine, your instructions are exactly the same as the ones here on the screen, just with a little less detail regarding the tools. So, starting at the top, we have that Metal Earth logo, followed by a really nice depiction of the Space Shuttle Enterprise. Just below, we have a QR code, which we can scan to get a 360 view of our model if we need it while we're building. This can be useful for putting different parts of detail onto our ship. Now, going down into the left, we have a depiction of of one of our parts. You'll see three different labels here, the insertion tabs, the fold lines, and the insertion holes. This is very important to understand because this is kind of the fundamentals of metal model building. What you need to do is make sure that you insert the tabs into the insertion holes. And when you see fold lines, you usually want to fold along those to form the different pieces into the parts that you need to build the space shuttle. Once you understand this concept, you're pretty much ready to build these models. Now looking just to the right, we have the Almighty Legend, which contains symbols that we're going to find throughout our build. This includes the engraved symbol and non-engraved symbol. When we see these two particular signs, we want to make sure we're putting the engraved detail facing out. And if it's telling us to put the non-engraved side out, that means the opposite, putting the engraved side on the inside. Just below those two, we have the attention point, which you're really not going to see too much of in these instructions. But if we do see it, it just means that we need to pay extra close attention to this particular part because it might be easily broken or disformed. The next two symbols we have are the all-important circle and triangle. Now, these are literally littered everywhere through the instructions. And the reason for that is because these two symbols tell you what to do with the tabs and how to connect everything together. So when you see the circles, for instance, you want to take your parts, put them together, and then grab as much of the tab as you possibly can in your tweezers, and then bend that tab down 90 degrees. When you see the triangle, you want to put your parts together, grab as much of the tab as possible, and twist them 90 degrees. Both of these symbols are very important when it comes to building these models, and I always recommend following the instructions first, and then going back over your model at the end to change the tabs to make them look a little bit better. Moving right along, we enter our tool section, which I definitely recommend the first tool here, which is a good set of wire cutters. These are going to help you cut out all your parts for the space shuttle, and it's very important that once you're cutting out your parts, that you get as close as you possibly can to the metal. Now, sometimes there's going to be a little bit of metal left over. You can pick up the part afterwards and trim it down using the same cutters, but Groovers, it's very important to make sure you have all the little bits of metal off of your parts. If you try to put them together with a little bit of metal 
metal still on there, you might not be able to get that nice finish that you want with these models. The next set of tools the Metal Alert team recommends is a strong set of tweezers and a good pair of needle nose pliers. The reason for both of these is to make it easier for you to be able to form your parts. The needle nose pliers are also very useful for getting into hard to reach areas and grabbing as much of the tab as possible to twist them or bend them according to the instructions. Now a good strong pair of tweezers will also be useful for grabbing tabs and twisting them and bending them accordingly, but mainly they'll be used for forming and getting the different pieces into the shapes that we need to build the Space Shuttle Enterprise. Some other tools I recommend which are not here but are definitely useful is a drill bit set to help you form some of the cylinders on the back of the ship. If you're looking to form the fuselage really nice, I would recommend a large marker. The marker will at least help you start the shape that you would like and you can form it out with your tweezers. Finally, moving right along to the bottom, we have the all important metal sheet diagram. This shows us all of our parts for our build, and I definitely recommend taking your metal and orientating it to this picture. That'll make it a lot easier for you to be able to find your parts when you need them. Now you'll recognize all of our parts are numbered 1 all the way through to 11. All we need to do is just follow the instructions step by step and take out the parts we need when the instructions tell us to. Alright Groovers, I think that pretty much sums up our instructions. And that means it's the time of the show when we ask, what is the Space Shuttle Enterprise? The Space Shuttle Enterprise was the first orbiter of the Space Shuttle systems built for NASA. Construction began on June 4, 1974, and the name was originally planned to be the Constitution, set to be unveiled on Constitution Day, September 17, 1976. But the fans of Star Trek had other plans. They asked the US President Ford to name the orbiter after the USS Enterprise from the famous space exploration show Star Trek. Hundreds of thousands of letters were sent from Trekkies to the White House, giving them reasons why they should name the shuttle after the Enterprise. Although Ford did not publicly mention the campaign, the president said that he was partial to the name Enterprise and directed that NASA officially change the name. The Enterprise's first day of service ended up being September 17th, 1976, and its primary goal was to perform atmospheric test flights after being launched from a modified Boeing 747. Because its primary function was testing technology, it was uniquely constructed without engines or a functioning heat shield. Only a few thermal tiles and some Nomex blankets were even real, giving some people the reason to say it's not a space shuttle. The Enterprise also used fuel cells to generate its electrical power. These were also not sufficient to power the orbiter for space flight. After all the testing was done, the Enterprise had been intended to be refitted for orbital flight to become the second space rated orbiter in the NASA fleet. During the construction of the Space Shuttle Columbia, details of the final design changed, making it similar and less costly to build the Challenger around a body frame that had been built as a test article. The Enterprise was shafted. The Enterprise, however, would be considered again for orbital flight after the Challenger explosion, but the Endeavour was built to replace it instead. So no love for the Enterprise, and at this point you might be wondering, where did it go? Well, it's been a little bit of a busy ship. From 1985 to 2003, the Enterprise was stored in the Smithsonian hangar at Washington International Airport before it was restored and moved to the Smithsonian's newly built National Air and Space Museum in Washington. But that would only be temporary and the Enterprise would be moved to the intrepid Sea, Air and Space Museum in New York City. There they had a temporary shelter built around the Enterprise, mainly consistent of a fabric pressurized bubble. On October 29, 2012, storm surges from Hurricane Sandy caused the museum center to flood and knocked out power. The loss of power caused the space shuttle pavilion to deflate and high winds from the hurricane caused the fabric from the pavilion to tear and collapse around the orbiter. Minor damage was done to the vertical stabilizer. The broken section was recovered by the museum staff. While the pavilion itself could not be replaced in 2013, the museum erected scaffolding and sheets around the enterprise to protect it from the environment. It now sits cozily in its retirement. All right, Groove Builders, we did it! We built the Space Shuttle Enterprise, and I must admit, it was a lot easier than I was expecting. Let's talk about it a little bit more in construction. 
My first point when it comes to building the Space Shuttle Enterprise from Metal Earth is that the back can be a little bit tricky with all of its cylinders for new builders out there. I definitely recommend either taking a drill set and using the little bits of drills to get the right shape, or maybe even using a pencil. And yes, the pencil will be too big to get the proper shape, but it's always easier to shrink a cylinder down to where you need to be than it is to actually build it out. So don't use a toothpick to try to get these guys. My second point is about these windows along the front. They can be a little bit tricky to get in their proper spot, so I recommend taking the left and right outer window panel and putting them in place first before putting any of the center ones in place. Now, if you want to have a really nice rounded window surface, I recommend using the doming set that I had here on camera, or maybe even a marble, to try to get that nice rounded edge. But once again, make sure you do the two left and right outer windows first before putting the ones in the middle. You'll have a lot easier time this way. My third and final point when it comes to building the Enterprise is making sure that all of the connected detail is all facing the right way. If you have any connections that are facing opposite, it will be very distracting at the end. So make sure that you're putting all of your cylinders here on exactly the same way. And same with your thrusters at the top. If you don't, it'll be very noticeable. With that being said, Groove Builders, let's move on to build time. The Space Shuttle Enterprise took me just over 30 minutes to build, and I definitely could have taken a little bit longer if I wanted to make sure these cylinders were 100%. Group builders, remember it's never a race, and when it comes to building these kinds of models, you really want to have a nice finished product, and rushing through will definitely not get you there. And finally, group builders, my thoughts. The Space Shuttle Enterprise from Metal Earth is a great first model for any new builder out there who's looking to get into the hobby. Now the model itself is pretty nice, I mean it's very well detailed and the pieces are pretty easy to form. But for somebody like me who loves detail, I can't help but wish there was a little bit more here. Now I do believe that the space shuttles are some of the older models offered by Metal Earth, which might explain how they're only one sheet and there's not a whole lot of laser etching detail on them. And I can't help but feel that there was a missed opportunity here, especially with all the different two sheet models that we now have, to expand on some of the detail that was on here. But at the end of the day, if you love the space shuttles and you're looking for something like this, Groovers, I would say go ahead and get it. You definitely won't regret how much fun this model is to build. Alright Groove Builders, that brings us to the end of our show. I had a really good time building the Space Shuttle Enterprise with you, and if you guys had a good time, don't forget to press that like button. For more videos like this, hit subscribe as well as we got all kinds of really cool content coming out in the future. Until next time Groove Builders, keep building. Now I gotta get R2 away from Laika. Hopefully she doesn't chew anything. <laughs>